Hi, this is Brian Aldrich from 4th Street Software, and today I'm just going to give you a little spin around the 4th Street football computer game. So, once you've installed the program, simply go ahead to the Start menu, select it to start it up, and after spin up, it'll go ahead and load. To load a program, click on the Open File menu, and choose any of the folders that you may have installed for the program. I'm going to select the 1970 Super Bowl teams today. This is what you receive free when you download the demonstration copy, the demo. Alright, so we have Dallas and Baltimore from 1970. It's 1970 special, it says. And I'm just going to start a game. So, first of all, before I do that, there's a number of different game options up here. This is the draft module which allows you to take players, move them around, trade them, etc. Assign them to teams. Lineup screen. So platoons shows you which platoons there are for various uh, functions. Kickoff squads, etc. At pretty much any juncture and any point in the game you can display a player simply by clicking on his name and hitting the display button or you can even edit him if you want to. To do that click on this. It will take a second to load but here's Dave Edwards. Stats are listed down here. Stats module. Of course we haven't played any games. So there really aren't any stats to speak of so far. Player editor. That's a direct route to it. This is the coach editor which shows you a little bit about the offensive and defensive strategies involved in the game. Schedule Editor. Right now there's only one game scheduled for this and it's scheduled for January 1st, 1970. You can rest players simply by clicking on this team. Since Dallas is the one that we are working with, you can choose to rest this team only or all the teams in the league for whatever duration you'd like, whole season, four games, etc. This is the play-by-play -play editor. You can edit salaries if you so choose. Version of the game. The play editor. Some of these items, probably not a good idea to play around with unless you know what you're doing. Background and foreground colors. And then the game. And there are several different options here. You can start a new game, either the next game on the schedule that I previously showed, or a non-scheduled game. Resume a game that you've already started. Autoplay a game, or run the entire schedule. We're going to start with the next game on the schedule. So we'll go ahead and do that. It'll tell us that that's Baltimore, Dallas against Baltimore. The Go button. And this is just the game option screen, so it tells you where the kickoff will take place at, what month it is, etc. If you want to run the offense only for each team and have the computer do the defense, you sure can. Or you can select it for one and not the other. There are some penalty options, some time options, and if you make any changes, you'll want to save them from the team screen. You can also, if you so choose, click on Select All so that all the teams are selected and then transfer all of those settings so that they are active for all the teams in the league. When you're satisfied that all the game options are set, click OK. And now we're ready to begin the game. So Baltimore won the toss. They're going to receive the kick. Dallas is going to have a normal kickoff right now and now we're ready to go ahead and start the kick. So it gives you a little blurb about uh, Baltimore winning the toss and here's the kick. Kickoffs by Clark. Ball is kicked to the Baltimore minus one yard line. Return to 19 by Duncan. So the ball is now on Baltimore's 18 yard line. Hit the reset button. This is a play grouping. If that font is a little bit too large for you, you can go into the Preferences, 
and change the size of just about anything in here. Right now it's at a fairly large level, so we'll tone it down a little bit to a size 12 font. We're going to do our counter with Nowatsky. Okay, now if you're on defense, you can go ahead and arrange your players in any format you want. Right now, Dallas is running a 4-3 defense. If you look behind them, there's a series of little black rectangles that denote different regions on the screen. So, pass rushers need to be in one of these front seven zones. That also defends against the run. Linebacker zones are back here, and they also defend against the run and short passes. These are the medium pass zones, where your cornerbacks and strong safety usually reside. And then this is the long pass zone where your free safety by default is sitting. You can drag and drop these players into different zones at your leisure. So at this point, this gentleman, Howley, is capable of rushing the passer. And he's also capable of playing any run that might be run on this side. We can take Jordan, do the same with him, and Edwards, and bring him here. Now, if you decide that you would rather have these players move at the time of the snap, you can do that, too, by selecting one of these options. So, there's a blitz, read and react, drop back into coverage, concentrate on run and concentrate on pass, and, of course, just a neutral. So, we're going to choose blitz for Edward just to see what happens. Once you've assigned your defensive players and you're comfortable with uh, how they are arranged, I'm going to move my free safety up a little bit. We'll hit de defense ready. And now you have two options. You can either try to audible out of this play. It's not automatic. It simply depends upon the capabilities of your quarterback and how loud the audience is. So since the score is tied, the audience is probably... Uh, for the, for the visitor, rather loud when they have the ball. However, Baltimore has the ball, so they should be unaffected by that. Now, to see what Unitas's audible rating is, though, we can right-double-click on him. And if you look in here, his audible rating is listed at 5. So, on a D10 roll, which goes from 0 to 9, 0 to 5 would be a successful audible, and it would allow you to choose a different play if you would, if you would want to. Alright, by the way, to display a defensive player, it's a little bit different. You need to right-click on his drop-down box and choose Display Player. So there's Jethro Pugh. Okay, let's snap the ball and see what happens. First down, Nowatsky gets good yardage across the 22. So a gain of four. All right, we'll reset that. And now we'll call another play. This time we'll do a slant to Hinton. Let's blitz him. And let's have Jethro Pugh drop back into coverage. Snap the ball. And a slant to Hinton, gain a 24 on the play. As you see, Unitas was matched up against the strong safety zone, but because we vacated it with a blitz, you'll notice he's down here at the bottom. The zone had been vacated, and Hinton grabbed the ball and ran for 24 yards. Pugh, on the other hand, dropped back into coverage, but they only dropped back one zone. All right, there's some other options up here for the defense and the offense. Right now, Baltimore is the active team, so up on the scoreboard we have the ability to uh, make substitutions. Also, choose different formations. There are several. Now, formations are not to be confused with packages. So, packages, as I showed you earlier on the uh, platoon screen or lineup screen, come in two back, short yardage, three wide receiver, four wide receiver, and single back. So, we can choose any of those. However, it probably isn't a good idea to select a four wide receiver package 
and then switch over to a formation like the two tight end, which is basically short yardage defense, because now you're going to have wide receivers trying to block uh, defensive ends, which usually doesn't end up very well. So let's go back here. Let's go to the I formation, and we'll switch our package to a two-back set. Go back and change to I. Here we go. So we have the I formation, and let's do a counter with Nowatsky. So we'll select the play. Okay, now defense also has several options. As you can see, the offensive options have been grayed out. We can again substitute if we would like to, or we can change our package. So right now we're in a 4 3. Here's a 3 4. Short yardage, nickel, and there are some default uh, formations that go along with these, or default positionings rather. So let's switch back to the 4 3. We're going to key on Nowatsky. So the defense is ready. Now, the key man in here is the middle linebacker, so we'll keep an eye on him. He's already playing the run. He moved up in order to try to meet Nowatsky in the hole. Not much there at all. Jordan did a nice job of preventing the cutback. So, over here we have a matchup between Curry, who's an offensive lineman in the center, and Jordan, who won the matchup, indicated by his star. Uh, Curry was using his B rating, which is a 6, whereas Jordan was using his A rating, which is a 3. Alright, so that's why the 6 and the 3 are there. And no gain, so it is second and 10 to go. If at some point you would like to view stats, you can do that simply by selecting the Stats tool. So, View Stats. We can take a look at the box score so far. Of course, there's much to look at yet. And we can also view a game log. That's just a short description of how to play the game. You can also substitute by this uh, means, which is much easier than using the other tool. So these are the players currently on the uh, field. If I would like to switch ball in at tackle, I can do that maybe for Vogel. Click on his name and then simply click the uh, platoon arrow. And it made a substitution. As you can see, ball is now on the field. You can also see stats simply by clicking on the off stats button. Offensive stats. Here are the play calls that have been called so far. Okay, let's do a reverse to Jefferson. Okay, defensively, let's have these guys concentrate on the run. So we'll choose a few of them here. Maybe not all, just to be on the safe side. And let's switch into a man-to-man -man coverage. Okay, defense is ready. Snap the ball. And Jefferson picked up eight yards. When you are finished with the game, you need to compile the stats. It's not done automatically at this point. So go to the stats module. And we simply need to select the game that we just finished. Here's one right here. In this game, which I auto-played, Baltimore beat Dallas 30-17. to now we simply have to compile the stats. So hit the gear icon and just hit compile. We don't care to back this up, or if you do, you can click yes. And after a few moments, stats are compiled. And now here are the season stats for Baltimore. To switch over to Dallas, simply select them from the drop down list. Their stats will appear automatically if they didn't for some reason. We can just go for this tool. 